One of the currently most common theories about the origin of the universe says that the universe originated from a single starting point, which carried the whole potential of the huge cosmos as we can observe it today. Before that existed, nothing. Either this nothing existed already for a very long time until the universe came into being from it, or the state of the pure nothing was a vanishingly small moment seen from the dimension of time. It is in the nature of man to think that everything has a beginning and an end, and must have been created or wanted by somebody. This is where physics meets religion, or metaphysics and questions of philosophy. Today we approach the big questions around the existence of a nothing and a creator from the perspective of quantum mechanics. But first, we would like to invite you to contribute to our channel and leave us a comment at the end that fits the topic. From now on, our subscribers' contributions will always get a heart and will pin your important contribution to the top so that everyone reads it first. Just make sure you already have a subscription, like the video, and mention both at the top of your comment. The Theory of the Birth of the Universe from Nothing There is very little that we know for sure about the nature of the cosmos. One of those few facts is that the universe is drifting apart. If something drifts apart, it must drift away from some point according to the laws of mechanics. Astronomers can tell that the universe is drifting apart by the so-called cosmic background radiation. This radiation is supposed to be a rest of the starting point of the universe, or in other words, the Big Bang. Until now, observations indicated that the universe was expanding linearly. Based on these observations, Researchers arrived at three possible future scenarios of the universe. The Big Freeze envisions that space, driven by dark energy, continues to expand until it has lost all power, all stars have burned out, and even black holes, having sucked all matter into themselves, collapse. Unfortunately, the Big Rip doesn't paint a much more colorful picture either, because according to this theory, the universe will eventually rip apart when it has overexpanded. The Big Crunch envisions the cosmos contracting like a rubber band when the gravitational forces of the celestial bodies have been overstretched. If we know more about the end of the universe, we can conclude new conclusions on the beginning and on phases of the nothing. In the meantime, science assumes predominantly that our universe has originated from a precursor cosmos. Ideas like there was a before the beginning of the universe or nothing at all, and that this state is taken again after the end of the present universe, do not fit any more into modern physics. Imagine the scenario where a last black super hole, the very last matter existing in the cosmos, sucks in itself. Then it collapses. One could also say everything that was decays to nothingness or goes into a state of neutrality there is absolute silence, or also not. Because according to current realizations of quantum mechanics, the nothing cannot exist at all. The nothingness as resting potential. Whoever looks into the cosmos can come to the idea that between stars, black holes, galaxies, or cosmic nebulae, gigantic empty spaces exist. In the past, this idea was indeed widespread. Today, we know with quite certainty that there is not really nothing between the celestial bodies. On the contrary, it's a little bit like with us on the Earth. You look at material appearances, and between them, there is apparently nothing. But this is not true. This everyday nothingness around us is filled with gases, such as the oxygen you breathe and carbon dioxide you exhale. In this nothingness, there are electromagnetic waves, radio, and radio beams, and much more. It is the same with the apparent nothingness in the cosmos. What looks empty is in truth filled with dark matter, with invisible structures, and probably many more secrets that we have not yet deciphered. It was assumed for a long time that there is an absolute vacuum in the cosmos, 
But these theories have been wavering since quantum mechanics began to gain ground. Since then, we know that the primordial ground of all matter and creation, which we long thought to be nothingness, is a quantum potential that is constantly subject to minimal fluctuations. Quanta are, as a reminder, particles of light, which are considered to be the basic building blocks of our cosmos. You may remember the most famous quantum models. One of them is the double-slit experiment, which revealed that quanta are undefined potential until they are measured or observed. Then they take the form of a particle, that is, a visible something. In the undefined state, quanta are pure potential, not nothing, and not really something either. To understand the theories of nothingness, a creator of nothingness and the impossibility of nothingness, it's worth looking again into the most common end-time scenario. The universe has run out of power. Black holes have gradually sucked in all material phenomena and each other. Today, pure energy and information are considered to be the actual basic building blocks of the cosmos. Einstein already said that energy is the basis of everything. It can be neither created nor destroyed. In the end, a remaining black hole has bundled all information and all energy in itself. The potential, which has drifted apart billions of years, unites again in a point. Thereby, it can come to a balancing effect which neutralizes all remaining power at first. You can imagine this as if two particles neutralize each other. An energy charge is thereby quasi-dissolved or united. Since energy can never be completely destroyed, however, an energetic potential always remains. This can be, like the quantum wave, undefined, and therefore, strictly speaking, nothing in the sense of a material appearance. Nevertheless, there is something, an eternal quantum fluctuation. Exactly this is equated today with the original state, the vacuum, or the nothing. We hold again, in this non-state, no defined or even visible matter exists. However, there is a pure potential of energy and information, and this can form again to something by a process, which is called minimum quantum of action or minimum fluctuation in physics. The End and the Beginning of a Universe Let's go again to the end, which very probably represents a new beginning at the same time. The last black hole has collapsed, leaving nothing but an undefined potential, a shallow quantum fluctuation, but balanced in itself so that the state remains at a non-formation of matter. You can also imagine this, a little bit like a fine light wave carpet, but the light in this carpet or potential is so small that we cannot see it with our eyes. The potential moves in an extreme low energy range. Einstein called the field which contains all potential, also the zero-point field. Its energy is not measurable with today's methods. However, Einstein already suspected that in this field, there must be an enormous energy potential, which we simply cannot understand up until now. So now this carpet fluctuates before itself and yet would be nothing in our eyes. Dark, not measurable, not existing. Then comes the actually interesting point. Because by a minimal shift in the minimal movements of this fluctuation, the new creation is triggered. Before this event, the fluctuations of the quanta have always balanced each other and have kept the undefined potential so stable. Then somewhere, a minimal deviation arises. The compensation into the further neutrality cannot take place at this place anymore. Instead, the potential falls apart here respectively. By the minimum deviation, a starting point arises, a chain reaction occurs, and what we know today as the Big Bang takes place. The quantum carpet brings forth a new creation all of a sudden, and the potential, which was undefined before, starts again with the forming of matter. You see on the basis of this model, however, that around this point, which finally begins to form matter, not nothing has been but an undefined and neutral potential. Is there a creator or a creator of nothing? 
Now we know from quantum mechanics that the undefined waves then begin to become particles and thus matter when they are measured or observed. The observer who provides for the creation triggering minimum deviation could be therefore something like a creating intelligence or God. At this point, three currents of science meet again, which always belong together in antiquity and were separated only in modern times. Physics, metaphysics, or religion and philosophy. In metaphysics, values like eternity and infinity are common terms. Here, even an eternal being is assumed, in which nothingness can be only a short temporary state. Metaphysics also allows views according to which there can be something like a divine creator, but this eludes human or scientific definition. Creation and nothingness can be experienced according to metaphysics, however, not with a present known mathematical means described. Philosophy, on the other hand, deals with the question of the pure being of man. That we are is clear. You and I are here. I speak, and you hear. If you look out of the window, you also see many things that exist. The idea of nothingness and non-being comes up especially with the subject of death. According to duality, if there is being, there must also be non-being or nothingness. Whether this is true or not, we do not know. There are many spiritual traditions in this world that say that all being and all creation are subject to eternal cycles. The death of a human being or even of a universe is always also a birth. In fact, the image of the cyclic universe is slowly gaining acceptance in physics as well. This would mean, back to our end point of a universe, that right after the last black hole has collapsed, a new universe is created from the temporary state of nothingness or pure undefined potential. The beginning or creator impulse would be according to these ideas already contained in the endpoint of the old cosmos, as it has been contained in all endpoints and beginning points of all preceding universes. From where or from whom now this creator impulse comes, and who has created, steers, or maintains the zero point potential are questions which we cannot answer today from a scientific point of view. But maybe you have an idea. Tell us who or what, in your opinion, is the actual drive in the universe. Do you believe in something like a god or the eternal cycles of the cosmos, which possess a kind of impersonal momentum? Let us know and share your opinion with us in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe and to like the video. We thank you for watching and hope you had a great time. We'll see you next time at Simply Space.